welcome again to our Sunday evening uh, time of worship and uh, just a devotion. And we just want to encourage you tonight uh, just with a little bit of uh, the Word of God. So uh, we want to thank you uh, for all who have been a part of our drive-in services and our parking lot uh, ministry there, uh, as well as uh, our online services these past few months. We've had so many different ones involved. Those of you that have been involved in the God Moments, uh, this has been a great season. As difficult as it has been uh, in some ways, it has been a great season of ministry at our church. And we just wanted to simply say thank you. It, it doesn't mean it's over. We're going to continue to do some of these great things and be able to utilize people, their giftings, their story, so that uh, God can continue to get the glory in our lives and we can continue to do some great ministry. But we are here tonight just to spend a few minutes uh, just receiving from the Word of God. And so let's just pray real quick and then we'll get right into it. Heavenly Father, thank you for the opportunity we have to just gather together, even if it may be online. Now, Lord, I pray your anointing be upon me as I share just a few words from your scripture. And uh, Lord, I pray that I will do your word no harm and that God, tonight it will be a time of encouragement and strength as we move forward, walking uh, in step with you on our journey, God, empowered by the Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So today I, I had the opportunity to preach. Um, again, uh, we want to continue to pray for Pastor Jerry. Got a cut on his eye, so um, we want that to be healed completely. But I was given the opportunity to preach, and I shared with you that today is the day, is Pentecost Sunday. And I shared with you the story of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit on the day of Pentecost. And as I mentioned uh, today and throughout this week, I have had the opportunity to actually speak on multiple occasions. I was privileged to be able to speak a message and it uh, be at my home church in Ketchikan, in, at the Lighthouse Church there where I grew up, and I was able to share the midweek uh, Bible study with them. And you can actually go online and watch that if you'd like to. Uh, but I had the opportunity to just really dwell this whole week on the the outpouring of the Spirit of God on the day of Pentecost. And as amazing as the event and the experiences are, again, I believe that, that the purpose for the experience is far greater. And I know I've said that over and over again, but I'm trying to get that because I think in our church culture today, especially in the Pentecostal, Spirit-filled, charismatic movement, we focus a lot of times on the experience that takes place. And look, I'm not belittling that. I love the experience of uh, just... You know, the, the Spirit of God moving among His people, especially in a corporate setting. Um, so I'm not discounting that. And I know there's some that are fanatical in some ways and do some things that I, I don't think are really led by the Spirit. There's a lot more flesh involved. Uh, again, I'm not here to talk about that uh, specifically. I, I just want us to know that um, in this journey of receiving the Holy Spirit, the infilling of the Holy Spirit, and being empowered by the Holy Spirit, that it is not just for that experience. It's not just so you can say, oh yeah, I remember on September something something that, you know, in 1999 that this happened to me. As, as important as those moments are because they serve as reminders that the Holy Spirit moved in us. What's greater is the purpose of it. So for tonight, I, I want us to just spend a moment and look at yet another account in the book of Acts um, where the Holy Spirit, the empowering of the Holy Spirit changed the lives of people uh, through an individual, right? Because that's how God chooses to work. He, you, he works through us as individuals. So in Acts chapter 5, verse 12 through 16, uh, we're going to read this. And I'm just going to read each verse and just kind of pause for a moment. We're just going to talk for just a minute. So verse 12 says this, And though the hands of the apostles, and, or sorry, not in though, and through the hands of the apostles, many signs and wonders were done among the people, and they were all with one accord, in Solomon's porch. God is going to use signs and wonders. So for those who say, ah, he doesn't do all that, he does. And I've seen it personally. I've seen some just some amazing things that have taken place. God will use signs and wonders, but he uses it to draw us to himself. There have been countless testimonies of people throughout history who were healed and made whole through the power of the Holy Spirit. God still performs miracles. I need you to know that. Some of you may be listening today and you're saying, God, I need a miracle in my life. Healing. Financially. Your marriage might be broken. 
uh, your job maybe uh, has some issues on your job. You may have some problems with somebody. You may have a, an offense against someone. Are they an offense against you? And, and you need a miracle performed. Unforgiveness. Sometimes unforgiveness can be the greatest destroyer of our lives. And, and to be able to forgive somebody can be one of the most profound miracles that takes place. In verse 13, it says, Yet none of the rest dared to join them, but the people esteemed them highly. They were very uh, respected and, and in awe of uh, the disciples because they were seeing these signs and wonders that were happening. And believers, in verse 14, it says, And believers were increasingly added to the Lord, multitudes of both men and women. Right there. Right there, if you've been listening to any of the stuff that I've been speaking this past week, you know that it's to draw men and women to the Lord. This is the purpose of anything that God does, great or small. It is to add believers to the kingdom of God, to give hope and salvation to anyone who will come to Jesus. That is the reason. Believers were increasingly added to the Lord. I want that to happen at, at this church right here. I want that to happen in your church if you go to another church. I want your church to begin filling up. But can I tell you something? We need to be ready. And that doesn't just mean that we're ready to give them a hug. And a, You know, I know we're, in, we're not doing hugs and handshakes and all that right now. But, but more than just a, an emotional response, we've got to be ready to disciple people, to journey with people. To the highs and the lows. You know, those first three weeks when you get saved, man, you are just on a high. And then all of a sudden, the devil will hit you in the mouth with something. Maybe it's an addiction that you had coming into your walk with God. Maybe it's situations that are starting to, to, to cave in on you. Whatever it might be. It's in those moments that sometimes, I can say sometimes, a lot of times the church falls short. We aren't there for the people. And it can't just be the pastors. Can I just stop that myth and that idea the pastors cannot do all the ministry. In fact, the scriptures tell us that the, the primary responsibility of a pastor is to equip the saints for the work of the ministry. Now, don't. It doesn't abolish or absolve a minister of doing work and being part of that, but he's not the one to do it all. And I'm not just saying that to like, oh, pity party for JD. I'm just telling you, look, I want to be right there with you, but I can't do it all. Pastor Jerry can't do it all. Each one of us has a responsibility to disciple people. You can't just say, well, that one's got a lot of issues. We'll just send them to Pastor Jerry. You may have gone through some experiences that look a lot similar to what they have gone through. God may have allowed that so that you can step in and be someone to walk with them because you've already made it. You've already come through that. Verse 15 and 16 says this, So that they brought the sick out into the streets and laid them on beds and couches, that at least the shadow of Peter, what? The shadow of Peter, Passing by might fall on some of them. Also a multitude gathered from the surrounding cities to Jerusalem, bringing sick people and those who were tormented by unclean spirits. And they were all healed. Can you imagine walking down the street of Homerville or wherever you might live and seeing somebody sick laying in the street? walking through the hospital and, and passing by hospital beds and your shadow. Man, if that was, I'd want to bring a flashlight, right? You know, just in case there were no shadows that particular day. Like if God was doing that, that, that is so amazing. I, I don't mean, I, just, I mean that funny, but, but can you imagine the shadow, the faith that was on display, the obedience that was on display? It, it, it wasn't because of, Peter and these guys, because they were just some, you know, perfect individuals. We know Peter's story, right? If you don't, you need to go read some of this stuff. He was just as human, if not more, than some of us. But he was obedient, and God used him. If God will use just a shadow to heal people, can you imagine what he would do with someone who's willing to go into the highways and byways and share the good news of Jesus, of his saving grace? God wants to use you to perform miracles. And some of you may need a miracle in your life first. God, God may be needing to do a miracle. Or maybe God wants you to step out even though you need a miracle. God wants you to step out and begin uh, being used by him to be the miracle in somebody else's life. And as you are being a miracle in somebody else's life, God will begin to perform the miracle in you. 
So if you're sitting on the couch waiting for God to do something, he may be waiting for you to do something. Step out. In fact, I would say he is waiting for you. God wants you to put feet to your faith. But he's not going to make you do it alone. He's going to be right there with you. That's why we celebrate Pentecost. That's why we celebrate the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit was imparted to the believer to empower us to take those tough steps of faith, to walk out our faith, to, to be bold and to share the good news that Jesus has come to save all. Tonight, as you're sitting there, or maybe you're watching this at a later time, and the Holy Spirit is working on you right now, I just encourage you to surrender. Surrender to His will. Let Him use you. He might use your shadow. He might use your words. He might use you to type out a message to somebody. He might use you to bless somebody financially. You might say, why would God want me to, to spend the little bit of money that I have so that I now in want only to help somebody else. I know that's, that sounds crazy. But I'm just telling you right now, every time that God has compelled me to give, He has always blessed me and taken care of me. He tells us that He'll never see the righteous forsaken. I'm going to see begging for bread. God will take care of you. You might get down to the last penny. In fact, your bank account might say negative pennies, right? I've been there. But ultimately, in the end, God took care of me. He gave me not only what I needed, but at times has given me more. And not just financially. I want my kids healthy and whole. I want my family unit healthy and whole. I want my community healthy and whole. And if that's part of the blessing of me being obedient, um, sign me up. I'm ready. I hope you'll be the same way. Just like what I preached about this morning. Don't just stand there looking at what you think you've lost. Just like the disciples were standing there looking at Jesus in heaven. Like, there he goes. What are we going to do? Oh, man. You're looking at something that you feel like has left your life. God may want it out of your life. So that what he can bring back into your life is even greater and will cause a greater blessing and greater favor and a greater impact for the gospel of Jesus. Will you pray with me? Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord, that you use us. Simple humanity. With all of its problems and brokenness, and you still choose to use us. In fact, you call us your, your most valued possession, your masterpiece. As broken as we might be, God, you have sent your Holy Spirit to empower us, to heal us, to make us whole. And tonight, Lord, I pray that anyone who may be broken, anyone, anyone who may be standing and looking at what they think they've lost, that in this moment, God, you will just heal. You will empower them and you will strengthen them. You'll come into that room, that place that they're at. That God, you will help us to be bold, to step out and be used by you. That maybe even our shadow will bring healing to someone in need. Our presence, our obedience will bring a miracle into someone's life. And that miracle will point them to you where their lives can be made whole. So Lord, I thank you for this day. Thank you for all that you're doing in us. Lord, we love you and we praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Hey, thanks again for joining us tonight. We love you here at New Vision. We're thankful that we have had the opportunity to just come into your home right there and, and spend a few minutes. If you ever need anything, you, you have any needs, just feel free to message us. We would love to be able to reach out to you. The way you can connect with us, the, one of the easiest ways is to go to our website www.mynvcog.com. We have all kinds of little forms and ways to connect with us and, and see what's going on at New Vision. So just reach out to us. We love you. We're praying for you. We're just asking God's blessing be upon your life. Until we meet again, we love you. God bless.